I told you they'd show up. You owe me a buck, dude. Hey, good to see you. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it's the Labor Day weekend. We're cutting loose. This is Friday, September 2nd. Now, as most of you already know, I like to look at OTC and penny stocks on this show. I'm a day trader. I see a lot of stuff through the day. I accumulate a nice small pile of interesting stocks, and then I share them with you at the end of the day. Now, we do look at both OTC and penny stocks, and there is a difference. All this news over here, that comes from the OTC market. It's news I've looked at over the last four or five days. The oldest is up at the top. The newest is at the bottom. Now, those are all penny stocks. But a penny stock can be any stock up to $5, and it doesn't matter what market they're on. And there's a bunch of those on the major exchanges, the NASDAQ, the New York Stock Exchange. And honestly, I really like playing penny stocks on the major exchanges for two primary reasons. One, most of the time, almost all the time, they're free to trade. There is no transaction fees from most brokers for the major exchanges. I got to pay $14 round trip for an OTC stock. That makes the whole trade a little trickier. So on the NASDAQ, I can just buy one share if I want to kick the price up. I can play the game. The second reason, I'm playing the game with all the boys that have the money, the big boys, the major exchanges where the big money is at. So if you really want to play the game, that's where you need to be playing. And they let you play for free. All right. We are over here at the otcmarkets.com website. This is where I always do my research in OTC stocks because it's the only site I know of on the entire internet where every single OTC stock is updated daily. FINRA and the SEC update this site every single day with all that important, relevant information we're constantly looking for. There's no need to be running over to Google every single stock looking for current information through decades of old information. Honestly. Save yourself the hassle. Save yourself the time. Come on over here. All they post is current information. All right, let's take a look at how our OTC market finished today. I'm going to go ahead and refresh this page because if you don't, the numbers don't change. All right, Whew. barely hung on here. I'm looking at the share volume. I do not want this to fall under $10 billion. Not that 10 billion is crucial, but there is a mental game going on here. And we were just at 11.4 billion. We've been under 10 billion for like four or five days. Finally got over it, and now we're creeping right back to it again. Hopefully, we do not fall under it. Our dollar volume still down 1.6 billion. Our average is 2.1, and it was an average because that's where we were at most of the time. This is becoming our new average 1.6 billion. We're spending a lot of time right here. And our trades, 250000 is where we've been hovering for a very long time now, maybe 60 days, and we just aren't getting anywhere away from it. So, yeah, looking at the chart for the OTC, it's just going sideways right now. Now, I've got some really interesting stocks to show you today. They caught my interest, and I think they're going to catch your interest, and they were definitely moving on the charts. Let's go see what I got. First stock we're looking at is a hot runner today. This is ticker ATYG, Atlas Technology Group. This thing was running. As soon as the bell went off, she was taken off. I had my scanners open. I seen her going. So I went and did some research real quick on her. Couldn't find any news presses anywhere. But I found a filing that was actually filed on August 30th, but was released yesterday. And there was some prime juicy information in this filing. So I figured there had to be more information. I went looking around and I couldn't find anything anywhere. Even went over to Twitter. I couldn't find information. It's like, really? Nobody's talking about this? So I tweeted it. I Facebooked it. And I put it on my Discord group. And there was a lot of responses. There was a lot of comments to them. And the stock did not fail to perform. It just kept running today. Well, as it was running, I kept on doing some more research because something wasn't settling with me. And there are a couple questions I have about all that's happening right now. And I'll share those with you as we go along. So ATYG, she finished the day at 00095, 216% gains. Now I say all the time, we don't look at triple zero stocks. And yesterday we looked at one and today we're looking at one. Well, we're looking at them because they're moving a lot of digits. One, two, three, four, five. They're climbing the ladder. Yesterday we did 100% gains. We went from 0003 to 0006. Now, it's not the 100%. We could have got that from 1 to 2. 
but it does that forever. Months it'll go from one to two, 100% gain over and over and over again. I was excited that it went from three to six. Well, this one started off the day at triple zero three and went up to triple zero nine five. So this one's doing even more movement down there in the triple zero portion of the chart. That is a huge jump. She is on the pink tier. She is current. She's got a transfer agent verified. I tell you to look for that all the time. The other one is verified profile. You need to see that one too. Now, it's because there's verified information by an unbiased third party. It's important information, but it's not going to stop your stock from going on the market or being traded. But if you're going to hold a stock for a while, you would like to know that everything is kosher behind the scenes, especially with a pink. Now, ATYG is a shell company. They've got no business, they've got no subsidiaries, they've got no revenues. They're doing nothing, which is what makes the filing today so important. So what was the relative volume around ATYG today? Holy cow, I had no idea it exploded this big. She went from 24 million shares a day over the last 30 days to almost 2 billion shares today. Woohoo! That is a huge increase. Share structure. Oh, man. All right, I always use the unrestricted shares, but I got to be honest. I have been finding some differences looking at the filings and looking at this page. So they tell us the unrestricted shares are 5 million. They tell us the float is 4.5. They tell us the DTC is 2.8 billion. I'm really not sure anymore. I am going by the filings. Uh, so somewhere between 2 and 5 billion is what we got. None of those are really great numbers. Financials. We know we got zero. They're not making any money. And the disclosures is where I found the information. Now, all of their filings are current, so we're not going to see any problem up there. And there is the 8K. This 8K came out today, but it was filed on the 30th. You know what I really like about an 8K? Is they're short. They're brief. They get right to the point real quick. There's the top. You open these up, scroll down just that far, and boom, read a couple sentences, and you'll know what's going on. And they did. They told us exactly what I needed to show you. But even quicker, they put in some exhibits in this one, which is just Xeroxes of other documents, pictures, if you will. And in a nutshell, there's the whole point to why we're looking at this stock. They just did a merger. Atlas Technology Group does a merger with Saxon Capital Group. But here's the play. Atlas created this company. It is a subsidiary, Saxon Capital Group. So they are going to merge into their own subsidiary. Why? Well, they made this one a jurisdiction of Delaware. In other words, they registered the company with the Secretary of State in Delaware. They are registered in Florida. But as you read up here, they want to be a Delaware corporation. I don't know why they just didn't switch, but they tell us right here, Atlas is we domicile from Florida to Delaware is by means of a merger with a newly formed and wholly owned Delaware subsidiary corporation, Saxon Capital Group, which was formed for the explicit purpose of the merger with us in order to change the company's domicile. And then we're going to change the name. So it's a big deal, whatever their reason is. So obviously the next stage is to look up Saxon Capital Group. Is there anything we can learn about them? Well, when I look them up, that's what pops up. Right there is their name, Saxon Capital Group. It is the address. This is a glass business for solar energy. They did a deal last year sometime with Safe Glass. It's in their news. And they got this company that a regular pane of glass is also a solar panel. You can not see the solar panel in it. And you can use this glass on anything. It can be greenhouses your houses, it can be high rises, it can be vehicles, cars, and boats. And the great thing is, it's just not simple glass. It can be fire resistant, bomb, bomb blast resistant, bullet resistant, forced entry resistant, and hurricane and tornado resistant. And this was something they just got a hold of just a little bit ago. And in case you didn't notice at the very top, it's on the OTC market. It is SCGX. It's right there. It is on the market and it is on the pink current tier. It is verified, has a transfer agent, looks good, but it's a shell company too. Has no business, has no money, at least what we're looking at right now. And look at the price, $18 a share. 
with no revenues. We can come over here and I can show you. She's got nothing coming in. Now, I don't know what's going on with that new business. It is there in the news. You can see right here, Safe Glass enters into letter of intent to be acquired by Saxon Capital. That was halfway through last month, but we see their name and that company on a website already. So one has led to the presumption the deal is done. Another interesting thing about this company is the share structure. Now, I always go by the unrestricted shares, but I've been having some discrepancies in these numbers when I'm reading them compared to their latest financials. And that's what happened here. Unrestricted, which is where I would have gone, is 678,000. Well, that's an awesome, awesome float. We're talking under a million shares. Incredible. Well, I jumped in here to their most recent financial, and this is what I found. It's down here. There it is. Number of shares in the public float, 9,428. No, that's not 9 million. That is under 10 thousand shares and i don't know if they actually tell us they do here they tell us the float is 9.4 so we've got a float ridiculous float of 10,000 shares at a silly price of 18 dollars for a company that supposedly has a deal done but i haven't seen any information about it now this is where it gets even weirder this company saxon capital group you just saw was a delaware company when I come over here to company profile, this tells me right down here, incorporation information, Nevada. This is a Nevada company. Now, I did more diving. What I was seeing was the absence of uh, shared information. Like, for example, this address, business address, it is not on any documents for Atlas. And Atlas's information isn't on any of theirs. The phone number is not shared. You normally will see that when there's a merger. You just combine down to one office. You use somebody's office. And if this is a surviving entity, then this would be the information they use. Not there. The other thing I was looking for are these company officers, the people that are signing the documents. I was looking for signatures to see if there was Atlas signatures and this company's signatures. I could not find them. The only thing I did notice in one filing from Atlas is they kept referring to the Saxon Capital Group, DE, Delaware. Like maybe it was a separate branch or a separate company. I don't know. But here's the thing. I don't think it matters. I think that this stock over here, ATYG, is running because everybody thinks what I just told you. And if we're wrong, is it going to stop the stock from running? Probably not. Confusion will keep a stock running just as much as the truth will. So I really don't know. But I think she has a good chance of continuing to run, even with her high amount of shares, which is somewhere between 2 and $5 billion. I couldn't get a number out of her financials. So let's go take a look at that chart, see what it looks like. This is ATYG six-month for our chart. We're doing our chart in on my free trading platform, TOS. I got this when I signed up for my free trading account with TD Ameritrade. You can do the same. Sign up, keep your account open, and you can use Thinkorswim anytime you like. So this is ATYG six-month four-hour chart. Now remember, she's a shell company. She's been a shell company this entire time. She's also been in the triple zeros the entire time and pretty much has just been going straight across the board in her picket fence barcode mannerisms. Now she's had a bumper jump here or there. The only impressive thing she's done is right here. She actually elevated herself on top of the 200 day SMA and has pretty much been sitting up there for the last two months. She did drop here more like a crouch, like a cat does just before it jumps up, crouched right here and then rocketed up here to her high bubble double zero one two so she was higher than triple zero nine five today low bubble a little while ago she was crawling across the floor can't get any lower than that triple zero one the volume today is the most volume she's had in six months and being the best day that she's had in six months you can expect that the texacos are just screaming right now 20 day one hour view Nothing impressive going on, sideways dipping, falling to a low bubble, not even doing anything after that. But then today, today she took off. 
Now the filing did come out yesterday, but it doesn't look like anybody paid any heat to it unless it came out late. But today we had a big, big run. Hit that high and she fell back, but it doesn't even look like she fell back 50%. Looks like a good solid gain. Buy-in was real strong today, has been tapering off for most of the day, and the technicals are hot, hot, hot. Everything, the PPO, percentage price oscillator, and the MACD are in agreement. They're cousins to each other, both pointing up. Look good. The RSI is just approaching overbought, and our ADX, which shows me the direction of the trend, if this changes direction, the trend has changed. Well, we did have a drop right there, but it looks like it started to pull back and it's continuing on. So this actually looks like it wants to continue rising. Let's look at the five day, five minutes, see if that says the same thing. All right, she did have a lot of volume right at the bell, and that's what I noticed, right at the bell. She started the day at 0003, and in the first five minutes was up 100% to 0006. Heck, for all I know, that could have been the first minute. And she continued running all the way till 10 after 11 when she hit her high here. Went sideways for a while and then took a dip and then for the back half of the day just went sideways. Now we have our 200-day SMA just coming onto the picture. This can be a concern. I see in many cases the price will just, like a curious child, run over to that SMA and touch it. Doesn't matter if it's high. Doesn't matter if it's low. It just has to touch it. Sometimes they'll stay there. Most of the time they just touch it and go back to whatever the heck they were doing. Now I'm going to draw my line at the bottom of the surge here and the top of the surge and cut it in half. You can do it mathematically or eyeball it. Close enough is good enough. I just want to see, did the price stay over the halfway mark? That means did she keep 50% of her gains or more? Sure did. Well, there's like a six, seven out of 10 chance she's gonna stay above that line and continue growing. So this is where I like to look for. She looks really good here. Now looking at our technicals, believe it or not, they look pretty good. Honestly, we have a crossover, don't we? That's just about ready to go over and it is pointing up. Same thing with the MACD. We got a crossover and it's just crossing the signal line. RSI is pointing up, it's only at 55, it is approaching the 60. Can't make heads or tails of this right now because it's been going sideways. So three out of four technicals look good to me. And we've got a break over the 50-day here. I like this. Now, I don't know if I've got the information right on this company. I don't know if the Saxon that Atlas is merging with is the same Saxon that has safe glass. I don't know. One of them is from Nevada. The other one's from Delaware. One of them has a ticker. The other one has never mentioned the ticker. I honestly don't know if they're the same, but you know what? I don't think most people know one way or the other. And I think this stock is going to run one way or the other. So I would keep my eye on ATYG, even though she has anywhere from 2 billion to 5.5 billion shares. She is running and she's at a really, really nice price right now. Triple zero nine five. Boy, she hits that one. You're going to double your money when she hits double zero two. Triple your money when it hits double zero three. And those are very, very little moves on the chart when you're down this low. Next stock we're taking a look at was also setting the charts on fire today. This is ticker LNTO, the Lantos Holdings. Now, this is a clean shell company. She's not doing any business. She's not making any money. And she's got no catalyst today. Not really. There's no filings. There's no news presses. But about a month and a half ago, she went through some serious changes. She changed the name of the company, the ticker of the company, went through a reverse split, really got that float down now. It's a micro float. And they are in the midst of closing a deal. However, today, no catalyst. And still, she was over 200%. She finished today at $1.23 with 214% gains. She's on the pink tier. She's current. She's got those precious green ticks I'm always telling you to look for. And as I said, she is a shell company right now. She's not in business doing anything, making any money, but she's getting there. Now, this business description is old. This is what they used to be, Pro Concept Marketing Group, ticker PMKT. Jump over to their most recent financial. We get a current description of the company. Lalantos Holdings, Inc. is a publicly traded company engaged in strategic marketing and business management. They offer proprietary engagement, marketing strategies, talent procurement, 
and management consulting to major international corporations engaged in a variety of industries. Now, this is a holdings company. Most holding companies own little companies that need a lot of help to become successful and grow. This company is helping big corporations to become even bigger. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, relatively speaking, it's good. It's 16 fold increase. That's great. But look at how small these numbers are. I mean, we're talking seriously under the radar. 545 shares a day is what she's been selling over the last month. And that's if she's actually been selling every day. And today, just over 8,000 shares. That is not 8 million. No, that's 8,000 shares. And we had over 200% gains today. And I am figuring that has a lot to do with the new micro float. They did a 100 to 1 reverse split. And this is what we're ended up with. Less than a million. Less than a half a million. 351,000 shares in this float. Itty bitty tiny float. Financials, well, you know they're not making anything because they're a shell company. And disclosures, well, their financials are all caught up. Their most current financial is the 22nd. Lots of good information in there. Sec filings, nothing since 2011. Hasn't been a lot going on with the company until here recently. Jumping on over to that news now. Not a lot of news here, but the most recent current piece of news came out on July 12th. The Lantos Holdings announces completed stock symbol change and formal partnership with Electra One Advisors. Now, the news is old, but it is all that we have. And really, they tell us everything we need to know. Now, I think the stock is truly running because of the micro float. I think everybody's learned that this thing has such a small float, it's going to move on very small volume. So this news press came out on July 12th. And it does cover a lot of what I've already said. The company has changed its name. They have changed their ticker. And they tell us that they are finalizing an anticipated merger right now. But they also tell us that they are working in conjunction with another company that's on the OTC market. Golden Triangle Ventures, ticker GTVH. They say that management looks forward to its mutually beneficial and synergistic working relationship with Golden Triangle Ventures as they continue to advance together on many fronts. This includes the recent partnership both companies have now secured with Electro One Advisors, an up-and-coming sustainable energy and microgrid design company. Electro One Advisors is currently retained on more than 200 microgrid projects to reduce carbon emissions, while providing green energy solutions and will employ Lelantos Holdings to do all the bureaucracy, all the paperwork, if you will, for services that will assist with capital deployments, marketing consultation, and managing installation processes that include permitting and construction. And then, while Lelantos Holding manages these processes, Golden Triangle Ventures will complement these activities by bringing large-scale projects to the table and providing a multitude of client management services for the contracts they originate. So you've really got three companies here working together. Don't know a whole lot about the new one here, uh, Electro One. And, of course, we've heard of Golden Triangle, but I haven't done any research with them either. But they're all pooling together right now, and it looks like this is the stock getting all the attention in the price action. So let's go check out that chart. Believe it or not, that is a six-month, four-hour chart for LNTO. But you got to remember, LNTO just came on the market July 7th. So that's really all we're looking at here. So here is July 7th right there. And she is only trading like 500, 550 shares a day on the day she's trading. July 7th, three days of trading. It's already July 28th right there after three days of trading. So there was like three weeks of no trading going on with this stock. She hit a low bubble on this day, bounced back up, and since then has just basically been falling until today when she ripped and kicked out a new high bubble of $1.50. we got lots of volume today. If you constitute 8,000 shares, is a lot of shares. However, relatively speaking, yeah, she was only doing about 500 shares a day on the day she was trading. Our technicals are great. we got a crossover on our PPO, percentage price oscillator, Going up, MACD's crossed going up, looking good. We do have a little bit of pullback right there on the RSI, which is to be expected. How about our 20-day, one-hour view? Kind of looks like the last chart. 
She came down, hit a low here, bounced up, and fell until today when she spiked up. Our 20-day SMA has just come into the picture, and she is above it even after the dip. She is still above that 20. And look, our 10-day SMA is crossing the 20. Beautiful sign right there. Our PPO is still climbing strong, MACD climbing strong, and our RSI showing that pullback. Now you got to remember, an RSI is the price line. If you were to take all of these bars and turn them into a line, that's what it would look like. So whenever the price drops, this drops. Whenever the price rises, this rises. That's exactly what it is. Last thing I want to point out on the hourly charts, look at that pattern right there. You see the mirror image of the blue line going up and this red line going down? See how they got super close right there. Well, why did everything change? Because right here, the trend changed. It was falling, falling, falling. Right there, boom, it started going up. And right there is when everything changed. This started coming up, this started coming down, even the MACD changed. So you can see this is a very nice tool. When you see these spreading apart, as you see them there, guaranteed the price is going to go up. And the steeper that is, the faster it's climbing. This is a guaranteed uh, pattern that you can use. And I use it as an entry play. Now, I don't get in right as soon as they start spreading. I wait for a little bit of growth. I think of that as insurance, confirmation, everything is going the way I think it's going to go. Then I get in and I watch these spread. And as soon as one of these changes direction, that means the trend has changed. That would be it's coming down or the price is coming down. Either way, I'm out. So I use it as my eg exit signal as well. Coming down to that five day, five minute. All right, she took off pretty quick in the morning. She jumped here from about 40 cents up to a high of about a dollar. So you've got over 150% jump right there. Then she continued on to a dollar 50, which she hit at uh, 1035. Boy, that was a late climber. Then she took a dip and she pretty much held most of it. We are up there at 214% gains. Everything looks strong. We are still climbing up with our only SMA on the board right now, our 10-day SMA. Our PPO is very strong. That is going in the right direction, nice incline, just like the MACD. We don't have a uh, ADX trend line yet. And our RSI is a little plancy, but we've been going sideways here. So you're not going to see a lot of rise in your RSI until the price starts to rise. I like LNTO, super duper micro float. What, 360,000 shares? They have a merger on the works right now with Electro One. Don't have a date. Don't know when that's going to happen. But people are starting to look at the stock right now without any new news and without any new filings. You may want to look at it too. Wow, the launch pad has been busy today. We got another ticker here that was launched to the moon. This is ticker WTEQF, WellTech Digital Health. Now, they did have a news press come out today. They have a legitimate catalyst, and it's big and juicy. Fact of the matter is, WellTech has been acquired by a NASDAQ company, and there's dividend shares involved. So they finished today at 0 0.0415, just over four cents, with over 176% gains. This is on the middle tier of the OTC. We call that the QB. The B stands for better. That's because you have to audit your financials to exist on this tier. That makes them more transparent, more trustworthy. They have the verified profile and they have a transfer agent verified. So they're looking good in that regard. Got independent directors. You need those if you're going to uplist. They may have used them to get to the QB and they may use them to go even further. And they are penny stock exempt. Now, I don't show this to you often, but I do want you to see this. There are only a few ways you become penny stock exempt. The first one is to have a price over $5. That's where our definition for penny stocks comes from, the OTC. Anything over $5 does not qualify as a penny stock anymore. Or you have to have been making at least $6 million over the last three years. I don't think this company is doing that. The last one that you can qualify for is to have $2 million in the bank if you've been in business for three years or $5 million in the bank if you've been in business for less than three years. And that's how you get there. That's how you become penny stock exempt. Now, what benefits does that bring you? Well, it's like being treated as an adult instead of a kid. 
You are responsible now. You've proven that you're not a startup company. You're not risky. So they take away all of the rules that you have to follow as a penny stock. So even though you are literally in the pennies and being sold on the OTC market, it is not a penny stock. So what does this company do? Well, I guess you'd say they're in the business of keeping people healthy. We are over here at their website where they're telling us about their new mobile app, which they like to call the Health Coach. They say that their digital health coach supports employees to make long-term behavior changes based on their unique needs. With the WellTech Health and Wellbeing app, users are motivated to develop healthier habits through team challenges, gamification, personalized content, rewards, incentives, and more. Now what the company's doing is they're taking their product and you're bringing it to insurance companies and employers who will then filter it down to all the employees. Now, they are working with a lot of different companies. They tell us here they are with UBS, DBS, Bupa Insurance, and reseller partners like Willis Towers Watson, Garmin, and Advanced Human Imaging. And that is the company, Advanced Human Imaging, that has bought this company out. They go on to tell us that WellTech is developing its newly acquired Internet of Medical Things, I've never heard of that term before, Internet of Medical Things, which is a platform for virtual care applications which will extend the WellTech continuum of care from preventive wellness through to virtual health care. So what was the relative volume around this company's news today? Not bad. She jumped 30-fold, went from about 330000 to almost $10 million. Financials? I do believe the company's making some money. They are. At the end of last year, they did $1.2 million. Don't forget about those three zeros. And they got to keep over $800,000 of that. Quarterly basis? Yeah, they're doing over $200,000 each quarter. So they are making money. Things are going well for them. Disclosures. Well, we know that their financials are all current, and we have no sec filings here whatsoever. So all we have is the news. All right, the news that came out today, September 2nd, Advanced Human Imaging enters into definitive agreement to acquire WellTech Digital Health. And here's the news. What we've actually got going on over here is a takeover. It is a change of control. The news tells us today that WellTech Digital Inc. is pleased to announce that 100% of their company has been acquired by Advanced Human Imaging, which is on the NASDAQ under ticker AHI. Now, nobody's being swallowed up or going to disappear off the market. Both companies are going to remain where they're at. This is now an asset, though, of AHI. So there's going to be some dividends included with this deal. For every six shares of WellTech that you own, you're going to get one share of AHI. Now, I think it's important that you know who AHI is because both these companies are in the same sector, running down the same highway, and there are so many synergies between their products, it's just unbelievable. They tell us here that AHI is an Australian company that has developed and patented a proprietary dimensioning technology that enables users to check track and access their own body dimensions and body composition using only a smartphone privately and accurately. The company has expanded its capabilities with the inclusion of transdermal optical imaging, which allows for the capture of real-time vital signs. The AHI technology delivers this seamlessly, privately, and cost-effectively in only a few minutes. Now, this is their ticker over here, AHI. They finished the day at $1.26. Now, today's news is right there, and they did jump. That is just a pullback. They were up over 150% on this news today, and it did fall back. And just a couple days ago, two days ago, they had another deal. Advanced Human Imaging signs master service agreement with Estonia-based Active Health, and it jumped 200% that day. So you've got two companies here working with mobile apps, all based on our health, that are running, and they're running together. So let's go take a look at those charts right now. We are looking at WellTech, ticker WTEQF. This is a six-month, four-hour chart. and There's not a lot of activity up there. For six months, we're lucky if we have 30 individual days of trading here. 
She has had very little volume all this time until today. And today was the first time over the last six months that she's actually broke over that 50. She's tried a couple times, but never even actually touched it. But today she crushed it. Went way up here from a low bubble of 0.015 to 0.077. You can think of that as 15 to 77. So you were well over 400% gains there. But she had a big drop and she is right up underneath the 50-day SMA right now. Our technicals, not real impressive, but they do have a little bit of hope here. Our MACD has got a crossover. It is pushing up towards the signal line. And even though the PPO is under the pink, what I see is that pattern, folks, between the ADX and the PPO. You see the blue line going up and the pink line coming down. Now, it's not a big separation. It's real slow, real casual, but that doesn't matter. A little or a lot. Either way, the price rises. Let's take a look at that 20-day, one-hour view. <laughs> we got two days, two days of trading for the last 20 days. And this one is over two weeks ago, August 11th. We had a low bubble there of 15, our high bubble here of 77, taking those zeros off. So we had a huge run here all the way up until lunchtime, about 12, 12.30, and then she pulled away. Technicals are definitely getting better. Both the MACD and the PPO are now on the top with just the slightest hint of climbing. Five day, five minute. Hey, we got some activity here. All right, it looks like our low changed when this day started. We were at 17. Three times 17 is 51. So you've still got over 300, 350% gains here. She has fallen down here to 176%, sitting on the 20 day SMA right now. The 50 day SMA has just come into the picture and I would think there's a strong possibility that this could just jump right up on top of the 50. Our technicals, again, they're not very impressive, but they show a little bit of hope. Our MACD's pushing its way up towards the signal line with a little bit of extra push. RSI is still about 50 and our PPO doesn't show a whole lot of promise. So actually, this looks like it's going to go sideways. We're waiting for something to happen right now. Now let's take a look at AHI while we're over here. So that is a five day, five minute chart for AHI, Advanced Human Imaging. We've had two nice runs in the last three days. You had the deal two days ago with Active Health. That gave you a run here of almost 300% from 60 cents to about $1.80. She had a big fall. Yesterday, she came all the way back down to the 200, which is a little bit higher now. And then she bounced off of that. This was a perfect buy-in if you had any clue what was gonna happen today. And today, she jumped from about 75 cents to just over $2 just about 250, 300% gains today as well. And again, she has fallen. Right now, she's hovering around that 50-day SMA, but I would anticipate her to come right back down to that 200. That's her habit. That's what she likes to do, so I'm not gonna second guess it. Technicals look like she's still falling as well. But you do see a stock that's very responsive to news. And WellTech has just been acquired. We don't know what's going to go on with them. And both these companies, WellTech and AHI, have similar products. One is working with keeping you healthy. The other one is monitoring your health. I'm sure they're going to bring these together somehow. So I would keep my eye on both of these stocks. They both are giving away a lot of money recently. Three stocks three deals and three charts that are on fire, if you don't count AHI in there as well. Now, with regard to ATYG, I have been doing some more investigating into this. This is the company that created the subsidiary, the Saxon Group, so they could re-domicile in Delaware. Well, I did put this out on Twitter, I put it out on Facebook, on Discord, and I've gotten a lot of comments. Well, this is one of the comments I got right here. This was on Twitter, it came from the editor of Newswire News, the president. He said here, this is false information. Saks Capital Group of Scottsdale, Arizona is not the same as Atlas, nor are they merging with Atlas. We've instructed Microcap to retract that news. So I'm not real sure what's going on here, but I could tell something was a bit off just at the first time looking at it. So keep your eye on this stock. It was running. I don't know what's going to happen now, but DD will probably fill you in on that. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.